Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for May 13th, 2022. Now, this past week has been active, very active. Yesterday, we were live covering a derecho, other known as an extreme windstorm, for over eight hours. It got so bad that the Storm Prediction Center had to issue a particularly dangerous situation, severe thunderstorm watch, which is very rarely issued. However, we are in the most active stretch of the season, as more severe weather is on the way. The Storm Prediction Center has already issued a slight risk, or a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale for a large area of the United States. Then, later on in the video, we will talk about the future as the threat for a tropical system could- Wait, hold up, hold up, time out. A tropical system? In May? What? I just- let me- let me talk to my producer. Is this right? Is this note card right? Are you sure you're not giving me the wrong one? Did we forget to throw this one out? No? The threat for a tropical system is possible for portions of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. So we'll hopefully have more information on that on the way. But before we get started, thank you guys so much for the constant support to the channel over the past week. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below so that we can continue to spread this information out to as many people as possible. Also, subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information that could include significant weather, like a tropical system. Oh boy. Now, we're doing something a little different, all right? Once we start to get into the heat of hurricane season, we're gonna start using this a lot more frequently. Uh, but for right now, let's introduce it to you all. Let's take a look at the current water vapor satellite imagery just to kind of understand what our environment, our atmosphere is currently doing right now. So we can see a couple things. First off, we have a low pressure system over the prairies right now, kind of stirring up a lot of trouble, especially for the central portions of the United States, as well as another low pressure system off the coast of the Carolinas right now, creating a lot of showers and thunderstorms down here. Let me zoom it in a little bit better for you guys so you can kind of see the general flow. There it is. Look at that, a lot more of a counterclockwise flow within that system. We also have a high pressure system over here sitting off of the coast of Bermuda, or actually just right on Bermuda practically. This is the, our Bermuda high that's kind of steering a lot of our stuff. And you can see it's clockwise flow here as well with a lot of strong wind shear over portions of the Caribbean as well. So uh, we got that. And then as well as a uh, potential something to watch here for the future, a strong atmospheric river is now starting to plunge its way forward into portions of the Pacific Northwest. Maybe a lot of precipitation could be coming up there as well. Definitely something to watch out for as this continues to move off towards the east. So now let's go ahead and transition now that we know where everything is at. Let's take a look at the simulated radar, see what all that means more or less. The timing is above me in eastern, so if you're in another time zone, I highly recommend you translate towards that time zone. And yeah, let's kind of get it going here. This is Friday evening as when we are starting off with. You can see a lot of showers and thunderstorms explode off along a line extending from Wisconsin down in towards the southern Midwest and into the Ozarks. We also have some other showers and thunderstorms over here in portions of central and northern Texas. And then a lot of scattered activity over here towards the eastern half of the United States. A lot more precipitation over here in the prairies of Canada. And then a lot of moisture starting to congeal over into portions of the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to continue to be the case as that continues to kind of just steamroll on through into the overnight hours here now. Now, as this continues to progress over into the afternoon hours of Saturday, all right, a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms form across the board here. Now, luckily, as of right now, it seems that most of the activity is a one out of five in the severe weather scale or a marginal risk. So that's kind of the good news as this continues to progress. But then as this pushes on through in towards Sunday morning and then Sunday afternoon, you see, once again, a lot of moisture continues to move on through and towards portions of the Pacific Northwest. But then this really starts to become really active over here towards the central United States and then progressing forward towards the eastern half of the United States. And you see this big line that surges here through into portions of eastern Kansas, western Missouri, down in towards central and eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas. So if you're in those areas, I'd watch out for some severe weather. And if you're east of that, all right, on the eastern half of the United States, you guys could potentially see the risk for scattered showers and thunderstorms here 
for quite an absorbent period, probably from Saturday all the way into Sunday and possibly even further into Monday as well. And I would include portions of Ontario and Quebec as well in the mix as well. You can see that there's a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms within this general area. But let's zoom in here just a bit. You can see a lot of these showers and thunderstorms that occur overnight from Saturday into Sunday continue to take shape over into portions of Iowa and Nebraska. They elongate further into Kansas and Missouri, and that becomes a pretty strong damaging wind threat there as that continues to move further south. Now, there also is the threat for some severe weather across portions of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, as well as portions of Michigan as well. So I would watch out for that. There is some residual scattered showers and thunderstorms over into portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota, but I don't really think those are going to be all too significant, or at least compared to the stuff out in front of it. And then you can see as this continues to play out how these storms continue to increase in activity as well. So something to keep in note as this continues to progress to the overnight hours. A lot of warm moisture is going to still be present over this environment here. You can see our high dew points across the board, especially as we elongate in towards Sunday. You can see how some of these areas out in front of that main line heading in towards the central plains gets dew points in, a, you know, in and upwards to about, I'd say, 70 to even the mid-70s. I mean, that is really moist, especially for this type of environment. Very strong damaging winds can be possible. And then you can see over here towards portions of the southern Great Lakes into the Ohio River Valley, you guys could potentially be seeing some good enough dew points for some severe weather as well into as low as the mid-50s to as high as the upper 60s and maybe even 70s in some spots. So definitely something to keep in mind as that continues to progress over there. We also have a lot of convective available potential energy within this area. Typically you want about the greens to the yellows uh, and even higher than that. If you get higher than that, that's the extreme amount of energy in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to either form and sustain. So basically think of this as thunderstorm food, all right? If the thunderstorms continue to feed off of this energy, they'll allow themselves to continue to form or sustain, maybe even intensify as well. And we have a lot of that, specifically on Sunday here, where we have about 6,000 joules per kilogram of cape. That is immense amounts of cape. And uh, that's just a lot, to be completely honest with you. So uh, those thunderstorms more than likely will tap into that environment, that energy to allow it to continue to sustain produce probably some large hail with it as well. And maybe a conditional tornado threat there as well. Maybe if you know you can get a quick spin up along the line, you could get some activity because this is uh, the helicity. This is the veering in the atmosphere that tells you as to whether or not the wind shear is favorable for storms to produce tornadoes. And there is a decent amount of helicity over here towards portions of Oklahoma and Missouri, as well as into Arkansas. There also is some limited amounts of helicity over here towards portions of Indiana and Illinois as well. So watch out for that. Maybe some of those showers and thunderstorms, if they can sustain, keyword if they can sustain, could potentially, you know, spawn a couple of tornadoes within this general environment as well. So that'll be something to watch out for, especially as that continues to move off in towards the overnight hours from Sunday into Monday. So now we're going to take a look at our general flow of the atmosphere here. And from this point onwards, this is basically going to be the 500 millibar wind shear and us trying to determine as to what we could potentially be seeing in the future. So this is once again, the flow of the atmosphere. This is our 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level. This is our upper level wind shear. And this shows us our jet streams and stuff like that. So we have our trough that is now starting to dig on through because of the new showers and thunderstorms that are forming across portions of the central United States and the Ohio Valley. And if we just backtrack here, you can see how that formulates because we have our low pressure system that we talked about over into the prairies of Canada, as well as our atmospheric river that's now starting to push on through as well. They kind of combine here. This is how that kind of comes about. They combine here and they create a lot of strong wind shear for portions of the central United States as well. So uh, pretty strong at that, but then I want you guys to focus here a little bit on this low pressure system and this, you know, this deepening trough that's moving off in towards the northeastern portions of the United States here on Monday. We also have a pretty strong high pressure system over Baja, California, and we have another little mini trough right within here that is starting to develop pretty weak low pressure system over portions of the Florida Peninsula. So something interesting to note with that. We also can see on the bottom right hand corner a little bit of a high pressure system that is developing over portions of Puerto Rico as well. So that's going to be something to note 
But then as this continues to progress, is there any new low pressure systems that begin to form? Well, according to the Euro, yes, sometime by the end of next week, there could potentially be some severe weather as a new low pressure system with some very strong wind shear is going to start to materialize here sometime along Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So that would be the 18th, 19th, and 20th. There could potentially be some severe weather for either the northern plains or the central plains here as this continues to move on through. And let's play this out just to see what happens. Oh yeah, there's your deepening low pressure system. There's your deepening jet right within there. And so some areas, maybe even in the southern plains and the deep south could potentially see some activity on that Sunday moving off into Monday as well. So expecting an active stretch of severe weather, barring something else that could potentially happening. And with that, I take you to the GFS's perspective, all right? This is the same exact thing, 500 millibar wind shear. We see very similar pattern here, the low pressure system that trough moves on through the northeastern portions of the United States. A new low pressure system then digs on through, potentially creates some severe weather over into portions of the northern plains, central plains, and southern plains. But what is that? What is that? That is a tropical system, my friends. And, uh, you know, usually when you have a tropical system there, that kind of limits a lot of the severe weather potential. So depending upon if this low pressure system right here, this tropical system forms, can determine as to whether or not you have your severe weather event over here in the central portions of the United States. So let's see if it's going to happen, shall we? And to that, I want to take you to this. We are now in full tropical analysis mode. We're going to take a look at tropical tidbits to try and see as to what exactly is happening, what is the GFS saying, why it's saying what it is, and uh, let's just get straight to it. Let's take a look at the precipitable water, which just basically tells us the moisture content within a specific spot. This is, you know, pretty helpful for us to identify as to where tropical waves are and how things can materialize, how much moisture content is within a specific area. And then we also have these wind barbs, which basically tell us as to where the wind shear is at the 850 millibar level. So if you see these kind of sticks with the flags on the side, draw an arrow on the opposite side, and the arrow points as to where the wind is going. So for instance, we have a high pressure system over here near Bermuda. These wind barbs are flowing in a clockwise fashion. So therefore, we have a high pressure system over here. Same thing with this low pressure system, and then uh, same thing with this other low pressure system over here in the portions of the Northern Atlantic. Now, here is our tropical wave to watch. Right within here, you can see the big plume of moisture, specifically right down here. And this is all going to kind of merge with what all is happening over here in the Southern Caribbean near the, you know, the Central America general area. So let's play this out here. You can see our tropical wave now goes into northern portions of South America. There's a lot more moisture now over towards portions of Honduras as well as Guatemala, that general area near Panama. And now the GFS says that there is a, you know, a consolidation more or less with all that moisture in that area. And then it continues to seep up that moisture and move off further and further towards the north where a hurricane, according to the GFS, is expected to make landfall somewhere north of Tampa, Florida, which is kind of pretty insane, just to say the least. So is the Euro in the same wavelength? Well, kind of. Let's play this out here. You can see that same tropical wave move on through, but instead of it forming a tropical system in the eastern portions of the Central America you know, general area, it starts to form a tropical system on the western portions into the Pacific. So... It does seem that somewhere down here, there could be the potential for enough moisture for a tropical system to form. It's just whether or not this wind shear here at the 850 millibar level is going to push it across portions of Central America into the Eastern Pacific. Now looking at the cyclonic vorticity as well as the 850 millibar wind shear, we have a very strong narrow corridor here because of this high pressure system a very strong corridor of wind shear here across portions from the Windward Islands all the way through into the central portions of the Caribbean, creating some about 20 to 25 knot shear, which isn't really all too favorable for tropical systems to form. However, as we play this along through here, we see a lot of these skinny sticks over here towards portions of the Gulf of Mexico, as well as near areas along Cuba. All right, if it can get into an environment to where this wind shear is moving a bit towards the north instead of more towards the west, this is going to be a little bit more favorable for a tropical system to develop 
and move off into the Gulf of Mexico. However, what will come into play is the placement of this high pressure system right here. If this high pressure system is even a tad bit further south or a tad bit further south and west or even west for that matter, this tropical system is going to go over the Central America general vicinity and head off into the Pacific. All right, the general moisture is going to head off into that general area. However, if this high pressure system alleviates and moves off a little bit further towards the east or towards the north, we can anticipate that moisture to be kind of pulled up by the high pressure system. Remember, the high pressure system continues to create this clockwise flow. And if it continues to kind of seed off a little bit more, that turning of the winds will be a little bit more in favor of this moisture starting to head off and towards that area. Now, this right here, guys, is the tropical cyclone heat potential. All right. This is basically where it's similar to Cape but it's in the water. So if the tropical systems get over this, then the higher the amount of energy there is in the water for the heat, which basically extends further down below the surface, uh, then the more energy there is for tropical cyclones to either form or sustain. And so the areas that we need to watch out for specifically is areas that are practically not in blue. All right, once we get towards like the sea green, the yellow, the reds, that's when we start to get into a territory where there is starting to get some energy in the water for these thunderstorms to kind of congeal and form tropical systems. And we have a bit of that over here south of Cuba, all right? Jamaica, that general area towards Central America, there is a lot of energy within this environment. So if a tropical system does form over here, it could potentially intensify as this continues to move off further and further north. And the sea surface temperatures are not bad either. You can see this red line that indicates what is favorable and what is not for these tropical systems to kind of sustain. If you're in the yellows, the oranges, and then of course the reds, then that is favorable for tropical systems to sustain. However, the blues are not very favorable, so they'll start to weaken if they do form. And, you know, it's not like we have some very high sea surface temperatures for these things to really intensify with like rapid intensification and stuff like that. So I'm not anticipating that unless if these sea surface temperatures increase exponentially. But we do have some high enough for there to be tropical development and maybe have something sustained as well. So that's going to be something to watch out for. The high pressure system as we move on through, we'll see as to whether or not that moves we also have a new high pressure system that I'm kind of anticipating to form somewhere over towards portions of the Bahamas. Whether or not that could develop can determine as to where that tropical wave can move off to, as well as the tropical wave. What does that do and how will that interact with Central America? Will that become a tropical system as that moves off into the Gulf of Mexico or as that moves off into portions of the Eastern Pacific? We'll continue to keep you guys up to date as this continues to progress further and further. But until then, that's all I got here for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I have a Discord server as well. Join it. If you want to become a member, hit that join button down below. And uh, I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have given me over the past week i mean we've grown so much we're almost to thirty-three thousand subscribers and so let's hope we get to it let's hope we get higher than that so that we can continue to expand our community once again thank you guys so much for watching my name is nate stay safe out there and i will see you guys in the next one so peace out